Two weeks ago, I was in the pet shop and I saw a dog toy here and I got really excited and I bought one. In fact, I got so excited that I asked my wife to go back later in the week and buy a second one. So now I've got two. And so now I'm going to tell you why as a chemist I find a pentagon, five-sided molecule like this, so exciting. Ferrocene is a very, very special compound. and it, It's special because it established an entire field of inorganic chemistry, which we call organometallic chemistry. And that concerns the chemistry of compounds where you have carbon bonded directly to a metal. This is a very good representation of C C5H5. This molecule here, or species C5H5, is chemically very unstable. It doesn't exist for more than a tiny fraction of a second without reacting with something. But if it has an extra electron, C5H5 minus, it becomes very stable. It will become an iron in solution. It can form salts. And the chemistry of this is really quite fascinating. Ferrocene itself is what's called a sandwich complex. And that means that you have a metal and it's sandwiched between two planar ligands. The reason why C5H5 minus became exciting to chemists was that in the early 1950s, a chemist called... No, it, uh, can, I, can I call you back in a little while? I'm just making a video. Bye. The reason why it's interesting is because in the 1950s, a chemist, Peter Pawson, took a salt of iron metal and reacted it with these and made a new compound that was bright yellow. And when he analysed it, it had one atom of iron and two of these rings. And he thought about the structure and thought it had the shape like this, with the rings joined together with the iron looks rather like a pair of psychedelic glasses, like that. It turned out that he couldn't really rationalise, explain all the different properties of the compounds based on this structure. And it took a different chemist, Geoffrey Wilkinson, to realise that the structure was much more exciting. And like all great um, molecules, or inventions, it was stumbled on by accident. Um, but it was Woodward and Wilkinson and Fisher who first proposed its structure, which was revolutionary at the time. No one ever thought that these ligands could bind to metals in this kind of way. The iron atom was sitting in the middle of two of these rings, just like the ham in a sandwich between two pieces of bread. It was so like a sandwich that to this day, these are called sandwich compounds. And so this compound here, ferrocene, has become a really iconic compound. The first of many, many compounds with different sorts of rings, with different things joined to it and so on. So what I'm going to do now is just turn on this Schlenk line just so that we have some vacuum available because we need to put the tube where the ferrocene is in under vacuum. We're going to attach it to this Schlenk line and the reason we need to do that is we need to put the tube under vacuum because if you heat it under one atmosphere it won't go anywhere but if you take away the atmosphere then it can sublime up the tube much more easily. And once people understood this structure they realised that you can make all sorts of other compounds with just one of these rings for example. So if you take this here which you can imagine is niobium with four groups on it, you get a stable compound with just one ring on the top. Some people call these piano stools because it has a place to sit and some legs. But I'm not sure whether this is a very good example of a piano stool. OK, so we're just evacuating the tube now, which is why the pump's making that horrible noise. So this is a heat gun. This is basically just what you buy in any DIY shop if you want to uh, peel the paint off your walls. Uh, but they're really handy because they're very good at heating things for short periods of time. So what we're going to do is we're going to heat this ferrocene. And what we should see is that it should 
disappear and reappear up round about here because it's going to sublime. The hero of this was, of course, Wilkinson because he discovered that what was before a chemical oddity was the start of a whole new area of chemistry, so-called organometallic chemistry, organic part and a metal. But, so he got the Nobel Prize, he shared it with the German chemist E.O. Fischer, and Peter Pawson became quite famous but never got the prize. Well, I've always felt very fond of Peter Pawson because the very first conference I went to as a student it happened to be in Moscow. I met Peter Pawson and I still have a photo which shows him and me sitting close together at the conference. In fact, I'm sitting next to Peter's wife, Mary, who was Chinese. And so I've always felt a great affection both for the compound and for Peter. It's just because there's, you're just heating it so you're giving it energy and you've got the, the thermal motion going through. You can actually see some of it now building up at the back here. That'll go away in a little bit. Actually, it hasn't gone as far as I thought it would, so it's only getting into this section here. But you can see it's now growing here quite significantly. So here, the molecules are getting enough energy so they can break out of being a solid and go straight into the gas phase. And because this whole system's under dynamic vacuum, they're being pulled up the tube when they're in the gas phase. But then they lose their energy. So they go and find the nearest wall and cling to it and then form right there. And that's what it's doing. So it's subliming right from here to there. And as the heat rises up, you can see this bottom boundary is starting to fall away because now those molecules are getting energy back again and they can sublime off again. So then they're going a bit further up the tube. And it's gone. So what we did was we put some ferrocene in at the bottom and then we heated it with this heat gun and it went from being a solid to a gas so it rose up the tube and then it lost its energy that we gave it from the heat gun so then it crystallised again and went straight back to the solid phase and stuck to the walls of this test tube and that's sublimation.